The Voice of America presents Jazz Club USA. <laughs> The Voice of America presents another in the series of programs designed to bring you jazz at its best. Here's your commentator and host, the well-known jazz critic and composer, Leonard Feather. Hello, and to all you jazz fans everywhere, greetings and modulations. Today on Jazz Club USA, we are very happy to be able to bring you the first installment of an unusual recording involving a very memorable event that took place recently in New York. The scene was the Metropolitan Opera House, and the music was that of Duke Ellington and his orchestra, the first organized jazz ensemble ever to give a concert in this tradition-hallowed hall. The entire concert was recorded by the Voice of America, and during the next few weeks on these Jazz Club USA shows, you're going to hear just about everything that the audience in the Metropolitan Opera House heard that night. This week, however, we'd like to devote most of the time to two of the three long works that Duke Ellington presented that evening. The first one is entitled Harlem. Duke was commissioned to write this for the NBC Symphony Orchestra to broadcast and record as part of a group by several composers for a musical portrait of New York. In a moment, you're going to hear how Ellington rearranged this opus for his own orchestra. Harlem, Duke said when he introduced this number, is a metropolis within a metropolis imitated by every Negro community in the world. It has been the home of many champions, of Joe Lewis and Jack Johnson, of the Lindy Hop and Small's Paradise, of the Savoy Ballroom and the Apollo Theater. Its four biggest funerals were for a dancer, Bill Robinson, a comedian, Bert Williams, a singer, Florence Mills, and a musician, Fats Waller. Its inhabitants sent a preacher to Congress to represent them. And contrary to the popular concept, Harlem has more churches than cabarets. The music, adds Duke, depicts Harlem as all one's senses perceive it through a Harlem air shaft window, the smell of good spicy cooking, the radios all simultaneously tuned into the current popular artist, and the sounds of gossip. And, he adds, don't overlook that in Harlem you find the world's greatest players and purveyors of the rumba. You'll notice that thought interpreted with some very interesting Cuban rhythms at one point in the composition. Here's the Duke Ellington Orchestra playing Harlem.
And that was Duke Ellington's great new composition, Harlem, given its first public performance at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York and recorded especially for you by the Voice of America for this Jazz Club USA program. And for the other new long composition that was introduced on that evening, I think we'll let Duke Ellington take over the microphone himself as you hear the announcement that he made on the stage at the Met. Thank you very much, everyone. You're very wonderful, very beautiful very enthusiastic, inspiring audience. We love you madly. <laughs> We'd like now to start our second half with what is known as controversial. It's a thing in two parts. The first is a little bit with an eye to the future or in recognition of the strong tendency toward modern things. The second half, of course, well, the first half, of course, is more or less fourth dimensional aesthetic. The second part, of course, is more realistic and goes back into the historic devices of jazz, the great American music. That is, the first is called later and the second half is called before my time.
Russell Prokop clarinet, Quentin Jackson trombone, and Harold Baker trumpet. Oh, <laughs> 
I believe we have just enough time left for one short item also played at the concert, Johnny Hodges' alto saxophone in a new version of a number he popularized in 1938, The Jeep is Jumpin'. Johnny Hodges! The Jeep is Jumpin'. <laughs> There you have a sample of what was heard at the eighth and most spectacular of Duke Ellington's annual jazz concerts here in New York. And if you keep listening for the next few weeks, you'll hear many more exciting things that were recorded during that concert. Meanwhile, don't forget to send your comments and your suggestions to Jazz Club USA, Voice of America, New York 19. This is your host, Leonard Feather, wishing you the best of tempos until next week. Jazz Club USA is a feature presentation of The Voice of America. The Voice of America presents Jazz Club USA. The Voice of America presents a new series of programs designed to bring you jazz at its best. Here's your commentator and host, the well-known jazz critic and composer, Leonard Feather. Greetings and modulations. Today I'd like to join you in listening to some more of the amazing things that Duke Ellington and his orchestra performed during their recent concert at the Metropolitan Opera House. Incidentally, Duke's concert career goes farther back than any other jazz orchestra. He played his first concerts during a European tour in 1933, then he gave several more during his second continental tour in Paris and other cities early in 1939. Then, in January 1943, he finally set a precedent at New York's Carnegie Hall by giving the first of what turned out to be an annual series of concerts there. This year, he decided to make an even more ambitious step by moving to the Metropolitan Opera House, which holds three and a half thousand people. And one of the first items on his program that night, as well as one of the oldest Ellington compositions, incidentally, that were played that night, was this delightful little thing with Sonny Greer playing the chimes, entitled, Ring Them Bells. Thank <laughs> you. 
And for the rest of today's program, we've taken some excerpts out of Duke Ellington's performance at the Met to present a little cavalcade of some of the great soloists in the present-day Ellington Orchestra. First, there is that perennial king of the baritone saxophone, Harry Carney, who's been with Duke for more than 20 years, and he's featured on a new arrangement of an Ellington composition, a very moody and sonorous number entitled Frustration. Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the most spectacular individuals in the Ellington band today is William Cat Anderson, who recently returned to the trumpet section and who has a phenomenal high note technique. Cat's contribution to this concert was a number he originally played with Duke in 1945 as part of the Ellington Perfume Suite. It's a short but very sensational thing called coloratura. Back in the 1930s, Duke Ellington recorded an old popular song, Rose of the Rio Grande, with a vocal by the late Ivy Anderson and a trombone solo by Lawrence Brown. Well, everywhere that Duke goes today, they still ask him to have Lawrence Brown play that number. So that is what Duke selected for his specialty in the Metropolitan Concert. Lawrence Brown in a typically brilliant and fluent interpretation of Rose of the Rio Grande. Thank <laughs> you. 
as a vehicle for the unique talents of Johnny Hodges, the alto sax star who has been a mainstay of his band for about 22 years, Duke selected a composition by Billy Strayhorn entitled Violet Blue. This number, I think, combines the melodic appeal that has endeared Johnny to the general public and the blues spirit that is closer to the hearts of jazz fans. Johnny Hodges and Violet Blue. <laughs> stars in the Ellington Orchestra is Paul Gonsalves, who joined Duke after the band returned from its European tour last year. Paul originally was a guitarist, but he played tenor sax in the bands of Sabby Lewis and Count Basie before joining Duke. Well, here he is in a new and rather unusual arrangement of the Billy Strayhorn number that became Duke's theme, Take the A-Train. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next comes the most versatile and personable of the Ellington musicians, trumpeter and vocalist Ray Nance, clowning his way through W.C. Handy's immortal St. Louis Blues. Yeah, 
girl that I love, she's just left this town. If I'm feeling tomorrow, the way I feel today, feeling tomorrow, the way I feel today, gonna pack my things, make my getaway. Say, Louis, woman, with your diamond ring. He's that man of yours by your apron skin. Get up, big cat, that car, a whole lot of gold. I never would be so bold, so bold. Blues, 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 where can you be? Blues, where can you be? Or else she would have gone so far. his Metropolitan Opera House concert, Duke used the number that has been popular as his concluding item on every concert and every one-night stand and almost every theater date he's played in recent years and for many years back. It started out, I think, as a Mary Lou Williams arrangement of Blue Skies, but after Duke and the men in the band had made a few changes, it wound up as a showcase for some spectacular ad-libbing by the five trumpet players. So here they are, Cat Anderson, Harold Baker, Nelson Williams, Francis Williams, and Ray Nance in something that Duke now calls Trumpets No End.
on that fortissimo note, Duke Ellington ended his concert at the Metropolitan Opera House here in New York. I think we can safely say that no sounds like that were ever heard at the Met before. But by presenting such a varied program, Duke Ellington didn't destroy the musical traditions of this world-renowned hall. He simply expanded and magnified them, and that is a job that nobody in jazz but Duke Ellington could be perfectly qualified to do. This is your host, Leonard Feather, reminding you to send your suggestions and your comments to Jazz Club USA, Voice of America, New York 19. Now it's time to say goodbye and wish you the best of tempos until next week. Jazz Club USA is a feature presentation of The Voice of America. <laughs>